I'm Nori Ildrum, and I'll be presenting our work on creating design resources to scaffold the ideation of AI concepts. Designing AI products is challenging. Research shows that most AI products fail pre-deployment due to selecting and working on the wrong problem. Current resources, such as human AI guidelines and design patterns, mostly help with prototyping and designing the thing right. Whereas practitioners ask for resources that support early phase ideation to discover what is the right thing to design with AI. One challenge is that designers struggle to understand what AI can do, and they tend to envision AI systems that can't be built. Data scientists, on the other hand, find it difficult to elicit what users need, so they tend to envision AI systems that no one wants. So there is this gap. And recent work highlighted that AI capabilities and examples might help, but we know little about what these resources might look like and how they can be used to ideate AI concepts. We set out to tackle this challenge by engaging in a research through design process. We conducted three design experiments where outcomes of each experiment informed the next one. First, we looked at how can we create a resource that captures AI capabilities. We then asked, how do we integrate this into the design process? And that revealed additional challenges, which led us to ask, how can we blend user-centered and tech-centered innovation approaches? So starting with the first design experiment, can we develop resources that capture AI capabilities? How do we go about doing that? If you look at existing resources on AI, most of these detail how AI works, instead of describing what AI can do. And building on the best practices, we took an examples-based approach. So we looked at common AI product features, such as spam filter, text generation, meeting summarization, medical imaging analysis, and so on. And we analyzed these bottom-up to derive high-level capabilities. So take biometric security as an example. Here, AI is detecting if there's a face in this image, and then it's identifying if this is Jane's face. Those are two separate capabilities. So we listed each unique capability for each AI example. Then we abstracted these to arrive at the high-level capability. Detecting a face and detecting a voice is ultimately about detecting a person. So all of these led to detect as the high-level capability. We've done this for 40 AI examples across 14 different domains, spanning consumer facing and business to business applications. And we worked our way through a large Slanky diagram to gradually abstract more than 200 unique capabilities, which led us to eight high level capabilities. These are estimate, forecast, compare, detect, identify, discover, generate, and act. Once we had this collection of examples and the breakdown of individual capabilities, the question then became, how do we integrate these into the design process? When and how this resource might be useful? So we started out by sketching some communicative forms. We created a table listing all the capabilities, their synonyms, definitions, and examples where they typically show up. We also created a set of slides that provide an overview of each capability. Next, we designed a pilot study to assess these. We created two design briefs, a rental vacation service and a ride hailing service. And we prepared a Figma board detailing each brief, persona, user journey, and the pain points, as well as the available data sources. And then we asked design students to ideate AI-enabled features first without the slides for the first design brief, and then with the slides for the second design brief. We found that using the resource helped ideate using a broader range of AI capabilities, but the quality of ideas didn't seem to improve. Most ideas were not buildable, often because they required near-perfect AI performance to be useful. So on a surface level, our pilot study failed, but it surfaced AI model performance as a key consideration for ideation. With this in mind, we went back to our collection of examples and captured the level of AI performance, as well as the level of expertise needed for each task. 
For example, workout detection can detect and count the number of steps, and it doesn't have to be super accurate to be useful. Having some count is better than having no count. Whereas with medical imaging, identifying cancer requires a highly specialized expertise, and it has to have near perfect performance to be actually useful. Once we mapped all the examples, we realized that more than half used moderate AI performance to create value in the world. So there were only a few examples in the real world where AI had to have an excellent performance to be useful. We think of the task expertise AI performance matrix as AI's opportunity space. When ideating, we noticed that students seem to focus on the right-hand side, where ideas require near perfect perfect model of performance to be useful, as opposed to covering this entire space. And we also noticed that following a user-centered approach, that is, identifying pain points before considering what AI can do, unintentionally limited the ideation towards the upper right corner, where there is high uncertainty for people. So from design experiment two, we learned that capabilities and examples alone are not enough. And innovators should also consider situations where moderate AI performance can create value. All of this made us realize that we needed a new design process for AI, one that blends user-centered and tech-centered approaches, such as matchmaking. So we started to explore how we can simultaneously consider both AI capabilities and user needs. In Design Experiment 3, we incorporated our resource into a healthcare project where we had data science and clinician collaborators, and our design team worked to facilitate ideation. We had a rich data set coming from nearly 40 hospitals, and we wanted to explore what are some AI opportunities to help clinicians in the intensive care unit. We conducted two ideation workshops. The first one followed a traditional user-centered design process where we probed clinicians' pain points and asked the team how AI can help. And in the second workshop, we first reviewed a subset of AI capabilities and examples, and then asked clinicians if they recognized a situation where AI capabilities might be useful. So most of the examples we created had moderate AI performance. For example, we showed a spam filter classifying email as spam or not spam and asked if classifying things as urgent or not urgent or important or not important would be useful. We assessed the ideas using an impact effort matrix. The ideas from the first workshop were mostly difficult to build and only about half was valuable. The second workshop, on the other hand, led to low effort, high impact ideas. So clinicians were able to take an example and transfer it to their own context. For example, predicting if a patient is busy to help assign nurses or predicting and pre-ordering medications from the pharmacy based on patient trends. We also moved away from envisioning ideas that required high AI performance to ideas where moderate AI performance could be valuable, which overall led to a better coverage of AI's design space. So moving forward, we need more research to understand how to innovate with AI. Designing new AI features for an existing product might require a different design process compared to, say, exploring potential value in a novel data set, or even designing a data set with domain stakeholders from scratch. So future research should explore these new innovation processes along this spectrum between user-centered and tech-centered design and see what kind of resources, design resources could support this. For more information, please check out our full paper and visit the project website to access the resources. Thank you.